let's look at some of the preliminaries. Finding a null alternative hypothesis. A hypothesis test starts with naming a null hypothesis. And an alternative hypothesis. Now, what is the null hypothesis? It states that the parameter value that is assumed to be true. In other words, what we're going to say is the null hypothesis is the parameter that we're measuring is this value. The notation is this h with little zero. And the way we will we'll, uh, state this is the null hypothesis is, again, a parameter, some parameter symbol goes here, equal to, and then the value of the parameter. So the notation is H sub zero null is the null hypothesis. And then these little uh, colon, then some symbol for the parameter and value of the parameter. Alternative hypothesis, it states that the main parameter is not true or it's not correct. That's all it says. It never says what that alternative hypothesis is. So it just states that how can the stated null hypothesis be incorrect? So the notation is this. We'll start with this HA for alternative hypothesis, and you'll have some parameter symbol. So this, this again, this when I say parameter, this is some symbol. So parameter, it could be greater than this value that we stated, the what value, the one that we stated up here, or it could be the parameter, whatever this parameter is, it's less than the value that we quoted up here. Or another way of doing this is three choices parameter, may not be equal to the value that we chose. Okay, so there's three possibilities for alternatives and the value that's being mentioned here, it's this value up here, whatever we chose, we, whatever we named it to be true. Another thing that we want to know is how do we know which direction the alternative hypothesis should go? So in a study, the direction marks what is, what is it that research is trying to show? Do we think it is greater than the parameter, less than the parameter, or just not equal to it? So not equal to. There are many ways to describe not equal to in words that don't use the word not equal. And I'm doing this for the homework purposes. So if we're going to use, for example, greater than or less than, somehow in the wording, it's going to suggest that, like that somehow I'm looking for something less, something greater. But when I'm looking at not equal to, rarely, is going to say in words not equal to and how many different ways can we do this look for any word that clearly lacks direction so the other two have to have some kind of words that tell you about direction and what are words that potentially have no direction for example other than the value a change in the value different okay or just any lack of direction at all so the fact there's no direction might let you know what we're looking for is a two-sided. This is known as two-sided, which I'll mention in a second. But again, not equal to. So if we choose the, that alternative to be greater than or less than, then this is called a one-sided test. No, we can never choose greater than or equal to or less than or equal to as symbols and this is for the alternative so all what i'm mentioning here is remember the, the null hypothesis is always going to be parameter equals value what i'm describing now is for the alternative if it's not this then how is it not this that's what the question is so it could be that the parameter is greater than the parameter is less than or not equal to so here we're describing different ways that we can say not equal to but we can never ever choose greater than or equal to or less than or equal to as the symbols are as the symbols we are trying to differentiate with a null hypothesis which all must always be equal 
If we choose the alternative to be not equal, then as was mentioned already, this is called a two-sided test. Now, why do we care if it's one-sided or two-sided? There's a difference. In calculation, or one sided and two sided. And so that's why we care. It's almost identical, but not quite. Let's look at some examples. Determine the null alternative hypothesis along with a parameter, with a parameter value. So, what is this one? Everyone's heard that the mean body temperature of a human being is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. But is this really the case? A group of Swedish doctors wants to test that belief by conducting a hypothesis test. A random sample of 923 people, all in good health, produce a mean temperature of 98.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So now I'm going to write the null alternate hypothesis for the situation. So I'm going to write HO. Since I'm looking for 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, this is a mean. Notice it is a numerical value. So I'm going to use the symbol that is the mean for uh, numerical values, which is different from the proportions that we've seen earlier. So we're going to write as this. We assume that the mean of uh, average human body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, to write the alternative, and yes, by the way, this is the E of X that we've used already. In other words, this is the population mean. To write this, I need to look at the words here to see if there's a direction. And so here's the first statement describing this. A group of Swedish doctors want to test that belief by conducting hypothesis test. Notice, the belief is that this is correct. What's the alternative? Well, this has no direction at all. So because it has no direction, I believe the doctors really want to test the following. That somehow, some way, this value is just not correct but we don't know in which direction. Could it be greater than or not correct? Yes. Could it be less than or not correct? Yeah, it could be that. So again, notice we're using this symbol because when we measure temperatures, again, you know, it could be like 98.23 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, 98.7 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, you know, 98.1 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, and so on. So this, when we look at this, uh, this is numerical. And again, so we're going to use the mean symbol for just measurements that are numerical. And what is this value right here then? This is X bar. And it was gathered using a sample of 923. So what is this value? This is the this is going to be used as the evidence against this. Is this this number? far enough away from this one to, to say that maybe this number is not correct. And we used a sample of 923 measurements. Let's look at another one. An airline company says that upon takeoff, planes that were full on paper leave with empty seats. So this is a common problem with airliners. And that's why in the United States anyway, you see airlines overbooking and leave with empty seats 90% of the time. Entities are no good for revenue, thus the air puts in place a new policy to reduce the percentage of planes leaving without with empty seats. And we're talking about planes that on paper are full, but when they actually leave the runway, some seats are empty. A hypothesis test will be conducted to see if the new policy is reducing the percentage of planes that are full on paper, yet not leaving full. A random sample of 97 flights using a new policy resulted in 89.4% of full planes leaving with empty seats. So what's my data like? Well, again, notice I have N is 97. And when I measure this, this is going to be, you know, all I can measure is 
uh, you know, and I guess I'll put empty for not full. Or maybe I'll just do this. Not full, full, not full, 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 not full. So you can see this, the data here is uh, categorical. So now we need to state our null and alternative hypothesis. So I'm going to first start with a null. Because this is categorical, really what I'm measuring here is P, population proportion. Or what I'm testing is the population proportion. So I'm going to use a symbol P for population proportion. And what's my null hypothesis value? It's that P is, again, we're going to assume that this is correct, equals 0 0.92. And why would you do that? Why would you use this number? So an airline company says that on takeoff planes that were full on paper leave with empty seats 90% of the time. So the way it's stated, it's maybe they've done this in the past. Maybe they have so much data that that's a known value. So the way it's stated, they say the state is sort of like a fact. What about the alternative? As a matter of fact, what is this other number right here? Well, this came from 97. So the value here has to be P hat. And again, it came from this 97 flight records. But notice, even though this number here, do I use it for the null or turn of hypothesis? The answer is no. All we I can ever test for a null and alternative hypothesis is the parameter. This is not a parameter. This is a statistic. It's not part of the statement that we're about to make. So now we need to make a statement about P. We believe it's 0.92 currently, but with a policy in place, what do we want to happen? Well, it says right here, we, the new policy in reducing the percentage of planes that are full yet not leaving full. So we want to drop this number. So right now, 92% of the planes that were leaving that supposedly were full in reality are not full and 97 flights, all of a sudden we found that it did go down. But of course, we don't know this number, but it has nothing to do with the statement. What I want to do is show that this new policy somehow is reducing the proportion of population proportion to something that's less than what we have before. Let's do another one here. Scientists has uh, scientists have built a maze that mice must run through. He lets the mice run through the maze many times and it records the time it takes the mice to find their way out. After many trials, the scientist records the mean found to be 14.25 minutes. Now, he speculates that playing loud music, such as heavy metal, will cause the time required for the mice to find a way out to change on average. The scientist will conduct an experiment and run a hypothesis to see if this is the case. So again, I want to state my null and alternative hypothesis, so I will do this. The time is in minutes. So this is numerical again. Unlike the previous one, which was about playing not full, full, not full, full, this is different. There's about time it takes for a mouse to escape. So maybe one mouse can do it in 10.2 minutes. Even another mouse takes 14.7 minutes to escape, and so on. So because these are just numerical values, I'm going to use the mu symbol again. <clears throat> again, why not, am I using this one? Just tradition for this uh, topic, but we always use these Greek letters instead of this other function notation. But right now, the scientist believes that normally, on average, it takes 14.25 minutes for the mice to escape. Now, you might notice that, wait a minute, this was gathered using many trials. So isn't this value really X bar? And the answer is, yeah, it actually is. But for the moment, it's being elevated to this status. And this is done all the time. Assume this, assume this is correct. Okay, let's put this here, make that the correct value. Now we're gonna introduce this loud music and see if there's a change on average. Do we have any evidence that somehow the things are changing because of the loud music? So like I mentioned earlier, this is an assumed value, assumed to be true. It doesn't mean that it's actually true. What about the alternative then? Again, we use the same symbol, and I have to use this number again. I cannot use anything else. The question is, what? how do I connect these two? In this case, what's the direction? Now, it speculates that playing loud music, such as metal, that will cause the time required for the mice to find their way out to change on average. So change is, is directionless. It doesn't have any direction. So we're going to say somehow we're not equal to that. 
Let's look at this last one. Comcast kept data on how long it takes the nation to fix a problem once they reach a household. The mean time is 48 minutes. So notice this one, the way they stated, it looks like what they're saying is that they're thinking of this value as the population. So this is the population mean, as far as Comcast is concerned. A new training procedure is introduced and managers wonder if this new process will decrease the mean time required to fix problems at each house. So what we're going to do is decrease the amount of time required to fix the problems. The hypothesis test will be conducted to see if the new training procedure reduces the average time it takes to fix a problem at each home. A random sample of 39 bits is using the new process produced a mean time of 45 minutes. So again, what is this value? Well, this is X bar from taken from these 39 values. But if I want to set the null and alternative, I have to use a parameter. So in this case, this is going to be the parameter value. The mean time for the population is 48 minutes. And what's the alternative? Notice I have to use this value again. So the only reason I've introduced a average is for you not to use it when describing the null and alternative. So I want to make sure that you understand that that's not what's being used here at all. We're just ignoring that right now, even though it's, it's part of the question. So hypothesis will be conducted to see if the new training procedure reduces, reduces. So we want what we want to do is the actual value is somehow less than the 48 minutes, thanks to this new procedure. And that's what we're going to try and test.